Hi, this is David Frayn, the editor of Tools of the Trade. I'm at JLC Live at the Festool booth with Rick Bush, who's going to show us an upgrade to their lunch cutting saw. Rick? Hi, David. Thanks for being with us today. As you may know, Festool is the inventor of the category now known as track saws. And we have a couple of different models, the TS-75 and the TS-55. They've been around for a few years now. TS-75 is our big boy, eight and a quarter inch blade, nearly three inch depth of cut. We look at the TS-55, which is our more popular unit. It's great for sheet goods and common stock moldings. And this has been around for a few years. When you are the inventor of such a tool in this category, you gotta look for ways to always stay ahead of the competition and bring some new improvements to your machine. So now we have, coming out this May, the TS-55R. It's got a few refinements you won't find in the TS-55, and let's take a look at them in detail. So some of the refinements you'll find in the TS-55R that we didn't have in our previous version, right away you may notice that the scale has changed a little bit here. The cursor has two positions. The part that says FS refers to the depth when you're on the guide rail. The part without the FS is when you use a saw free of the guide rail. We've also changed the bevel. You can see that it's a much larger scale than it was before. We also increased the range. It now swings from negative one up to 47 degrees. So when I open the bevel release knobs, tilt it over, then I'll go up to that 45 position. There's a detent override in the back. I'll pull a pin, and it'll drop over, allowing us to extend that range even further. So you're a little over bevel there, which is nice. Yep. You can drop that back down now into the zero degree position. Or if I want to drop it into negative one, again, I'll just pull that pin, and the weight of the saw will drop it down into the negative one. Another improvement you'll see is that the side of the housing here is flush. The hose connection point, or also the dust port, can be swiveled out of the way, and now I can work flush up against the wall. So a couple ways we did uh, that to make an improvement was to make sure that everything on the side was flush. Not only the clear window here, which we can remove, but also that waist side spl uh, splinter guard. So when I put this on now, it's flush with the side. And when I'm ready to make a cut with it, I just push it down the material for that support. So that gives you a splinter guide also, what, on the out, on the off-cut side, right? Exactly. Hey, one other question about that. So with the flush side, if you're riding up against the wall or something, mm -hmm. how close can you make that cut to the wall? You can get within half an inch of the wall on cool. this whole side here. And also with this being flush, now when I make a bevel cut, I can leave it on there and it's out of the way. Cool. So I can leave the splinter gun art all the time if I'd like to. Another thing we offered now in the, uh, for the U.S. market is an overlay scale you can apply to the saw, which allow you to use the imperial scale for setting so your depth. That's a peel and stick that goes that's on? That's just a peel and stick sticker. It'll come with the saw. It's inside the manual. Good reason to crack open the manual. You'll find yeah. that sticker in there. That's cool. Somebody asked about that. Yeah, I'm we glad to see it. you guys did it. <laughs> yeah, we thought we might get a warm reception on that. Another improvement we made to the saw was just in the riving knife. Now, as opposed to the splinter you find on a table saw, which is always in a, uh, coming up and down with the blade, this one allows us to go ahead of the blade, and then the saw blade will engage the material. The reason we did that was so that if you have to make a very long cut and you've got a short rail, you can actually engage that kerf with the, with the riving knife to set where the blade's going to cut. So you can drop that into an existing kerf and then go continue on. Exactly. Cool. Another part of having great depth control, and the flooring guys really appreciate that, is being able to have a micro adjust on here. So we take a look at having those two depth settings. You know, one's on the rail for most of my cutting tasks, but if I am going to cut up against that wall to trim the floor down, I'm probably going to be without the guide rail, and I want to know where my depth is exactly. But if I need to dial it in, I'll take this applied wrench here, which is also used to change out the blade. I'll just use it in the top here, and I can change the depth to a very, very fine adjustment. Wow, cool. So you can just skim the bottom as need be. So that somebody could cut through, make do a cutout with, go, without going too deep. Exactly. All right, Rick, can you show us how that thing cuts? Yeah, for you. Before I make the cut, kind of a little bit of a habit for myself is I always like to attach the hose first before I apply power to the saw with our plug-it cord. That way I know I'm not working with a live tool while I'm fiddling with that hose. Okay. The other thing is I'll, I'll go to the end of my cut so I know I've got enough hose to make it all the way there and it's not going to get caught up on anything. Yeah, why find out while you're doing it? Yeah, that's never any fun. So we'll pull this back to the beginning. 
I'm going to keep the hose and the cord in my hand for now. I'll plunge it down. Now you can see on this waist side, we have a pretty clean cut. It's a rip cut that's pretty easy to do, but most importantly, what's underneath the guide rail right here and that splinter guard, it's a perfect glue ready joint. Cool. So Rick, uh, when is this going to be a tool going to be available? The TS55R comes out in May at 585. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, David.